for like I'll, okay, I'll accept that premise and we'll move forward uh, and I'll play devil's advocate. Sure. Right. I mean, as 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 I told you, like when I gave this argument initially, I didn't give it like maybe there's some kind of a van in wagon version of a Muslim or something. There's like an open theist and all of this. All of all of these other positions. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That that's that was right. probably not the best card for me to play. Right. And I don't think so it's I'm very saying, responsible. I'm saying if you so, have if you have like a rational god that's capable, that's like omnipotent and knows every single move that that a, that a human being, and he creates you specifically specifically to worship him right uh and he knows every single action that you're going to do and he's capable of creating you in any way that he wants you to uh, that he wants you to act right um and let's not include in a premise that like free will is a thing because i think in like the sunni version of islam like there isn't this notion of like libertarian free will mm-hmm. uh, so it's kind of close. It's kind of close. So, to like do you want to presuppose libertarianism for this discussion, and then presuppose the view that you forwarded of what um, omniscience is, and then go and proceed under those assumptions? Well, the problem, the problem with, the, well, I don't want to, de- I don't want to talk about sort of like a free will omniscient paradox type of discussion. I want to stay on this one. Right. Let's let's grant that. Let's grant. Let's just grant for the sake of argument that there are no problems with libertarianism, and then just proceed under that notion and we'll just claim and we'll just say that libertarianism is just you know obviously you know the idea that uh whatever the condition uh of control that's necessary for moral responsibility you can still have an under an indeterministic metaphysic or something and let's just say that there's no we'll just grant it and there are no problems with it we'll put those aside and then we'll move forward under those assumptions and also move forward under the assumption uh, so we can use free will as an appeal, and we're not mm-hmm. raise any other objections that would take us outside this argument. And then we also keep the notion that you employed of what omniscience is. And I, I think that I could still, I think uh, even under those assumptions, even though I don't hold those views, I think the argument still fails. One second. Ah. Sorry, I was just getting this. Well, just to summarize, you're saying that let's let's proceed with like let's just say there's no conceptual issues with like libertarian free will, but let's also proceed on the omniscient, omnipotence, the way the way like they're typically character. Yeah, and I think that the argument still fails under those assumptions. Yeah, the under those assumptions, the argument still fails. The uh, divine hiddenness argument. Yeah, the no the the modified divine hiddenness argument about worship. Yeah, okay. fails. I mean, yeah, sure, you can. I mean, yeah, sure, go ahead then. Uh, okay, yeah, so. Make, yeah, make your case, yeah, sure. Okay, so this is the what I think. So like, let's keep, let's um, agree as to what I need, what is necessary for me to do to um, offer a defense to this argument. So, so what I'm trying to do is offer a defense, right? And so I'm trying, and my parameters for the defense are that, I can provide a notion that still keeps this, whatever property we're agreeing that God has that requires worship, um, and uh, is logically possible for him to not have everyone uh, worshiping him. And and let's say we could even put parameters around uh, whether or not you, did you want to put parameters around what type of people worshiping, or did you just want to say all people worshiping? So the, the existence of not everyone worshiping him, um, and I'm trying to provide a logically possible example that still keeps the conception that we haven't really dutifully outlined uh, that God has of wanting to be worshipped, right? And so th- as long as I can provide an example that, that preserves that concept, whatever the property that is, and I know that we're probably going to have to s- start to seek to define it, um, and is logically possible, then I defeat the argument. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I talk about the modified, you just have to give like an instance where... You could have one logically possible instance one, in which God second. has that property. Well, one second, where you have like where God has every like. Remember, I'm specifically talking in an Islamic context. So I'm gonna fall back on like the predicates that like at least in orthodoxy are predicated of the Islamic God. So if you tell me like maybe God had created this specific person uh, who was like who who wasn't like a resistant wasn't resistant. He was like non-resistant. And he had like this desire to. Uh, he was like an agnostic who really had like a desire to like um, um, get to know God and sort of like worship God, but he just needed like those some kind of 
some kind of justification for the belief, but he like spent his entire life looking for one and just, just died without ever coming across one. And I'm sure you wouldn't deny that there there have been such people, right, from empirics. Like I assume you. Yeah, I'm not going to deny that. Right. I'm denying so, the logical um, connection. Right. Just, just, just let me finish. Like, if you're going to say something along those lines of like, well, maybe God used that person for some other, for some other purpose or something. I would just take that to be, um, in sort of conflict with God being like an omnibenevolent creature that He would like just use like. Uh, a, a human being as like a means to an end rather as an end in itself but like I would take that to be like not compatible with a god that's supposed to be like the most merciful or like perfectly merciful but unless you can find me like something that wouldn't go in conflict with like a predicate that like orthodox muslims predicate of their god but nevertheless you could have that type of a person who's like a non-resistant maybe like an agnostic spends his entire life not not ever coming to know god and dies without ever knowing god and there's like a justification for that while simultaneously having a god that's omnipotent perfectly rational omniscient the most merciful the most just then i would say that you have a defeat for the argument yeah okay cool okay then okay then we're on the, we're on the same page and so uh, I'm, I'm okay with allowing the condition that, and it's just like the um, non-resistant, non-believer, that there's, it's not, it's a certain ki- type of person. It's, it's maybe the people that were resistantly not worshiping him and had grudges against him or something like that, that that wouldn't be logically inconsistent with whatever property, those properties that we've stipulated. But yeah, if someone was like, look, if God existed and God revealed himself to me and then was in a relationship with me and then uh, made it known to me, then I certainly would worship him and I don't have any moral objections to God. And I think if God did exist, he would be a creature worthy of, or not a creature, whoa, whoa, he would be a being worthy of worship. Uh, then yeah, okay, so let's proceed. You're making, let's... you're making an even weaker claim. I'm saying that just that this person is just saying that, look, if I just have epistemic justification of God exists, I would worship him. No, 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 not epistemic justification. That God himself actually, uh, not that he arrived at some argument, but that God made his existence known the way that I make my existence known when I enter a room with you. Well, I don't see, well, where do you get that from? Like, even Schellenberg doesn't have such a strong condition. Well, I'm just saying, like, uh, I think that um, that's because the time. Need, that's why I would need to be in a relationship with you, right? Or whatever it is. Or All you know, I'm I would saying be- is that you need to, like, I'm just saying that the condition, all the, the, condi- the, like, I'm saying that the only condition I'm holding is that you need to know, and I'm taking no to be, like, justified true belief that this creature exists. In order to worship it. Okay, yeah, okay, then I'll just, then even though I'm making a bit of a stronger claim, it would still fall under that definition. And so it would still be, it would still be a workable defeater. Wait, wait, do you think, the, wait, okay, I mean, like, there's no need, reason to talk about that if you, like, just agree to that. But do you think that you need more than that to, like, worship something than that you know it exists? More than knowing that it exists? You yeah. have to know. You have to know that, given. I mean, you have to. There are certain properties that we've already stipulated. And I think that those we could just say that those are the properties that uh, the are worthy of worship. So he would have to know that he exists and that he is that type of God, right? And that that's yeah. That would be the only thing needed. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'm in agreement that that this being exists and this being is the type of being that can be worshipped. Right. That's worthy of worship. Yeah. Okay. So, th- so this is the type of appeal that I w- that I would make. Right? Is that um, inbuilt into God's notion of worship has to um, imply that you know even more than just those things. And if uh, God couldn't just like look, the whole idea is that if God revealed Himself, what I'm trying to forward is that if God revealed Himself or whatever, or made it known, however, through whatever means, we'll leave that ambiguous, made it known that he existed to this type uh, of person, you know, uh, the moment that he was uh, in the state of being non-resistant, um, he couldn't just reveal that he exists and that he has certain properties, because he, he would have to reveal other facts about himself. And if he didn't, if he kept those other facts that I'm going to talk about in a moment, if he kept those hidden, then he couldn't be perfectly good, or, or most good, or whatever it were.
Oh, okay, so you're saying that uh, if if he only revealed that he exists and that he's the type of creature that can be worshipped, but he didn't reveal other things, then that would be contrary to him being like omnibenevolent. Yes, yes, precisely, okay. precisely. Okay. And yeah, so yeah, sure. here, here's the, the, the other uh, facts that I think he should reveal to you in order to be omnibenevolent. So like he has to reveal to you the way in which you stand in relation to him and the types of things that are at stake to you. Like if, think about um, if I was, if I, like we, we can see this in even a relationship that's not perfectly loving has this facet, right? So like it, imagine that, um, that you had something that if I didn't reveal it to you and, and um, then you would, uh, you would have uh, the chance of, uh, like, hold on, let me put it this way. Let's say that if I reveal to you, right, these things that I'm talking about, then the way, the way in which I revealed it to you would actually damn you to hell, right? And that you, so you wouldn't, my revelation to you would actually prevent you from achieving that goal that, I'm just, that I just talked about there. And so, so here, here's, the, here's the basic notion, right? Um, so God wants you to go to paradise and whatever all that entails, and he has a purpose for you, and it's, it's to worship, it's, it is to worship him, but it's, it's, it's to worship him in harmony, in paradise, and for you, and you need to be, that's the type of worship that he wants, right? And so you, there are certain conditions to be able to make it to paradise, and then thus meet the conditions necessary for the type of worship that he's already talking about, right? And so, um, the, so this is, this is what, what I would say with respect to that. Um, he has to reveal to you if he, if he doesn't tell you that like, look, this world is a test. Okay. And the only way that you're getting to paradise and thus going to be a candidate for, or be, uh, have the, you know, be able to worship me in the way that I've designed you for is to pass this test. Right. But listen, if he were to tell you, if he would reveal that to you, right, then he would actually not be perfectly good because then you but his revelation to you would create conditions by which you would immediately fail the test. And so the idea is um, that uh, it's, it at least is logically possible, right, that his revelation, that you're passing a test, you would uh, be, it's like a jail guard watching you, like, or a cop watching you. Like, if, a, if you might want to steal, right, and you, under the right conditions, you would steal, right? But you wouldn't steal in front of a jail guard or you wouldn't steal in front of a cop, right? And so, What's happening is you still are a thief. You're the type of person that wants to steal, right? It's just that you, because you know that there's going to be some, you won't make it to paradise or there'll be to some punishment. The reason why you're not stealing is just because you'll be punished or get caught. You would still love to steal. And if you didn't think that you would be punished or get caught, you would steal and you still have the desire to steal. And so you wouldn't be not stealing for the right reasons. It's not like you say, I'm not going to steal because I know that's wrong. I know that deprives people of property and that's immoral and that's wrong for me to do. And I'm, I'm resisting. I have reasons to do it because it would benefit me, but I'm resisting that urge to steal on the grounds that, you know, I'm, I'm actually freely making a decision. Not that I'm being coerced, right? Now, if you're being coerced not to steal because, you know, God's big and powerful and you might not make it to paradise and you might suffer if you don't make it to paradise, then you're not, you're not freely doing it short of coercion, right? And so what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say is that if God wants you to make it to paradise, it's logically possible that his revelation to you that there's a test and everything like that will actually create the conditions that you won't do the right thing for the right reasons. You will do the right thing just to avoid punishment. And then thus you won't be the type of person that will actually make it to paradise. The people that make it to paradise are the ones that do it for the right reasons, not, not just because they don't want to be punished and not just because they know that God's watching and they'll get caught. And so what the idea is that he has to plausibly, the reason why he doesn't reveal himself to you or, or, or show that his existence and that he has those properties is because he would also, in order to be omnibenevolent, he'd have to tell you the way in which you would have to be, um, what's at stake. Because if, if he didn't tell you what was at stake and then you wouldn't be, and you were in a relationship with him and he was perfectly loving, you would say, why didn't you tell me? It's like telling your friend, like, I'm walking off a cliff and you fucking didn't tell me that I was walking off a cliff. I thought you loved me. Right. And so the idea is he would not consider you perfectly loving, nor would you be if you didn't reveal it. And so the, the only in between is he has to hide himself 
because the moment he shows that he exists and he has those properties, in order for him to be uh, have the omnibenevolence, he'd have to tell you because he's in a relationship with you and it would be wrong for him to hide that from you and you would be in see what i'm saying and so the reason why he's hidden is because he has to remain hidden to give you the possibility in the chance of actually making it to paradise if he revealed it you would never make it and so he would be a he'd be an evil immoral god for damning you to hell and not giving you the chance and so it built in that is that you have the chance to fail some people aren't going to make it but if he revealed himself none of those would make it or at least well, it's logically at least it's logically possible that such. Well the problem the problem here, right, is that you've sort of introduced another desire that God has, which is that he desires you to pass a test, right? Which wasn't in the initial premises that we spoke about. We said that if God had sort of like this prime desire of you worshiping him. But if you add if you add that he has two desires no, it was no. It's one desire. It's the same desire. It is in the initial premises. Is, it, how, I'm how unpacking what type of worship he requires, and that's right. built into the notion of what type of worship he requires. He right. wants to be worshipped by the type of person that makes it into paradise of his own free will and not of coercion. And so, it, it's not a different desire. It's the same desire. That's just what it means for him to make you to worship him. That's the type of worship he's interested right. in. So, so the specific. Now you're saying that the specific. The specific person that he desires is the one that like passes a test and then starts worshiping him, right? Hello. Yeah, that's the type of worship. That's that's the unpacking of the notion of worship that you were created for. No, I mean that's not gonna be. That's not like a conceptual analysis of worship. That's like you analyzing a specific deity's desires. And his specific desire of worship, that's what you're unpacking. You're not merely unpacking the notion. Because this is like different from sort of like the Schellingbergs. Because in the Schellingbergs, you're merely unpacking what is entailed by love. In this case, you're like unpacking not what is entailed by worship, but what is entailed by worship by a specific being. And then we have to go back, well, what being are you talking about? Are you talking about the Islamic God? Or are you talking about... So oh, it's directly analogous God? to the Schellenberg example. Because, again, those... Those Schellenberg's is not so his idea built into the Schellenberg response is a bear, it's actually analogous is the idea that he wants you to uh, it would be a soul building appeal. So in the pla in standing in the place of the Schellenberg example for the in the placeholder for um, wanting worship would be uh, in wanting the notion of worship is that you be the right type of person for the right type of reasons to pass the test. That same notion is built into the Schellenberg example because it's a soul building theodicy. It's the idea that. He wants you to be the type of person for the right type of reasons and uh, freely choose to, to evolve your soul in the right way uh, to be in that, in, in that type of relationship with God, you know, in that type of... And so it's the same exact thing. No, I mean, I think you missed the analogy, like the symmetry breaker that I gave you. I said that in the Schellingberg's case, what's specifically being analyzed is the concept of love. Whereas in this case, you're not anal analyzing the concept of worship. You're analyzing the desire of this God to be worshipped. What is entailed by that desire? Because in the like what Schellingberg says is merely from the concept of love, all of these things follow. So if a God predicates of himself that he's perfectly loving, then logically he can't do anything that's contrary to these entailments. And one of those entailments are that he wants to enter in a relation, and if that's what he desires more than anything else, then he will make himself known. But in this case, you're sort of analyzing what kind of desire, what kind of a worship does God wants. You're not sort of just analyzing the concept of worship. Not that much turns on this. That was just the first point that I wanted to point out. Um, the second point that I want to make um, point out, you said that he desires specifically to be worshipped by people who pass a specific test. But if he's omniscient, why would he? Why wouldn't he just create those people who pass this test? Because if he's also merciful and he doesn't want to maximize, and if he doesn't want to maximize like the amount of suffering, and he's omnipotent, mm -hmm. right? So if he doesn't just want to maximize the amount of suffering in the world, why wouldn't he just create those people who are going to pass the test and worship him? Why would he also create those people? Who are non-resistant? Because if he did that, he wouldn't be perfectly loving. Wait, 
no, but that's the opposite. If he's just creating people he knows are going to suffer and are not going to be the type of people that 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 would pass the test, then he uh, and he's going to and he knows before he creates. No, them they have the ability gonna... to pass the test. It's just some won't. No, but he knew he, before he created because remember you already said. Yeah, he did know before. Yeah, he knew before he 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 actualized the type of world in which the most people met those conditions or whatever, and they met those conditions of their own free will. I mean, in the Molinist type of appeal here, you know, like. Wait, he, wait are you saying it's not? Wait, are you denying that it's given that he's omnipotent? He's given that he's omnipotent and omni and omnibenevolent. He couldn't actualize a world. In which only those who are going to pass the test would exist? Yeah, because then they wouldn't Why? be free. No, they're going to be free. They're going to be free. Because remember, we've already, we've already granted for this, uh, like, X hypothesis. One second. Ah! Uh -oh. Sorry. X hypothesis. We've already granted that we're not taking any issue between God for knowledge and libertarian free will. So you can still have free will, even though God is going to know every single act that you're going to do, right? We've already granted the compatibility of those two. So I'm saying, why couldn't God create a world in which everybody would freely choose to pass that test and then be the type of being that God would want to be worshipped? Because like, what is well, I would be appealing to a notion. Well, I would be appealing to a notion. Uh, exactly how Plantinga gets around that objection. It's he's appealing to uh, the idea that uh, there's such thing as like trans world depravity. And so I would be employing the exactly similar notion that no, but you have that it's logically possible that humans have it's logically possible that humans have some trait, name namely being trans worldly depraved, and that it's a logical it's logically incoherent to suppose that any person who had the type of morally significant freedom would be the type of person that could still have that freedom and then not uh, fail in some moral way. Well, it, doesn't same say, it doesn't appeal. It doesn't appeal to. If, if I'm correct, it doesn't appeal to logical modality. It appeals to metaphysical modality, because he can't appeal to logical modality. Because if you're going to appeal to logical modality, you'd have to you'd have to say that a world in which a world in which only um, people who are going to freely choose to pass the test and thus be the type of people that he wants to worship entails a logical contradiction. That's the type of thing you have to affirm in order to make the move that you make. If you want to appear to logical modality. Say that one more time. Well, if you like, if you're, I assume you're talking about like planting us, what was his book called? Um, the one we response to Mackey. Um, what was it called? Uh, God, freedom, and evil. I think that's what it was called. Uh, where it talks about trans world depravity, which is like his defense um, when he's responding to like Mackey's logical problem of evil. He's he's saying that it's metaphysically possible, not logically possible, because the option of logical possibility is not available to him. And the reason for that is, if you want to say like the only way you can make that move is if you can if you can sh if you can show that there is some logical contradiction entailed by a world in which people by their own free will by their own free will uh, choose to pass the test and be the type of beings that God would uh, want to be worshipped by because if that doesn't uh, if that doesn't contain a logical possibility sorry if that doesn't contain a logical contradiction then it is a logical possibility and omnipotence is god being able to actualize any logically possible world so you don't you, you can't appeal to logical modality you have to appeal to some other kind of modality for this for this one as well i think this is the same thing um, yeah, I understand what your claim is. I have a response no, for that. I have to go AFK for four minutes. Hold on, I'm going AFK. I'm just trying to let him know, and okay. you can talk to him for like five minutes until okay. I get back. Okay. I understand the objection. I have a response to that. I'll be AFK for about four or five minutes, and I'll be back and I'll respond to you. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I was just going to say, like Venus, like I think one of the other objections to this is if you, they want to take this position where um, there's some like logical incoherence behind like. 
uh, beings being able to like freely choose the evil or some shit like that. I think most people respond with something like it, uh, whether, like the question of whether or not there's uh, freedom in heaven at that point. Like, can there be freedom in heaven if there is a logical contradiction? Can 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 there exist? Because the idea of heaven, right, is that there is there is a possible world where only the good people, you know, only the good choices are made, or only the the you know these these free good choices are made. But that just seems to fly in the face of like that objection that Se Seamus brought up. Right. No, I mean the only point I made is that. Because he said he's making the same reply that Plantinga is making, but Plantinga is not appealing to logical modality. That's that's the only thing I pointed out, and there's a good reason why he doesn't. Because then he would have the burden of showing that there is some kind of a logical uh, contradiction entailed by such a world. Right, yeah, yeah. Is there such a thing as a bad blowjob? Well, obviously, 